This video is an indirect sequel to my videos on incel and self-help. You don't need to have watched those, but doing so will give you some extra context. Side note, the self-help video is banned in Singapore due to a defamation claim by one of the subjects. So if you want to watch from there, you'll need a VPN. There's no sponsor by the way, you just need a VPN. Look at my subscriber count, who would want to sponsor me? A <laughs> Raid Shadow Legend? <laughs> no, there's really no sponsor, seriously. No, uh, to potential sponsors, I take bribes. Let's get started. Both subjects on my previous videos, the incel community and the self-help movement can be considered cults or cult-like entities. For simplicity throughout this video, I will forgo all nuances and consider the entire spectrum of these groups as cults. But don't misunderstand, there are nuances. In my video about the self-help movement, I looked into self-help gurus and communities, mainly how they function and how they skirt regulations to do what they do. And in my incel video, I talk about why people stay in these cults and how people leave. In this video, I will talk about how people enter cults, it's basically how cults and cult-like ideologies recruit. And you might be wondering, Fat Man, isn't the chronology of releasing these videos in backwards? To which I reply, shut up. There are generally two categories of recruitment methods. And since there are no official terms for them, I will call them angling and trawling. I gave these categories these names because they reminded me too much of fishing. In trawling, the cult will generate pieces of propaganda that can reach a wide audience, like a net trawling for fishes. And if the victims, the fishes, are not careful, they will swim into the net without even knowing. Some of these nets include self-help books, religious texts, fake documentaries, manifestos, or you know, just random internet memes. Basically anything that can reach a wide audience with little gatekeeping of quality or control. Cults choose which method they will use depending on the type of culture they want to foster. Self-help gurus likes books because it gives them an air of authentic professionalism. Documentaries are preferred by conspiracy cults for making them look more credible, and internet cults use memes for their tinge of freedom. <sighs> Jesus Christ, I was supposed to be cloudy, not burn my ass off hot sun. Fuck. Ugh. All the tactics I've mentioned and will mention in this video targets the lower and middle income class. Don't get me wrong, that's not a small amount of change. We're talking thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Maybe even in the millions if you're lucky enough and has a distinct lack of apathy for your fellow human being. But if you want to target the billions, if you want to target the big juicy fishes, you're going to need one of these. The New Creation Church built the Star Performing Arts Center above the Star Vista Shopping Center alongside Capital Land. The initial construction cost was 500 donkey million Singapore dollars. In 2019, the church then bought the rest of the building for another 300 million donkey dollars. Meaning that the total cost for the church comes to a whopping 800 million donkeys. Churches like these preach the prosperity gospel where if you give money to the church, to your God, you will be blessed with wealth and prosperity in return. The more money you give, the better. And look at us, it obviously works because we can afford this beautiful church. The NCC isn't even the only one. City Harvest Church has spent $500 million investing in Suntec. This is a yacht. It's a show. It's not any better than a boat for catching fishes, but it's the show that you can afford a yacht. In the same way businessmen play golf instead of street soccer. It's not because they don't like street soccer, but it's because it's a way to show that you can afford to play golf. It's to show that your business lets you afford to play golf. The nets these methods cast are white because they don't really care about who they catch. They are going by numbers and the probability that when a large enough portion of the population is reached, there will always be that handful of poor swords that fall for their shtick. You can usually tell the difference between a net cast by a cult and an authentic piece of the media used by normal people by what they talk about. Nets will often use Barnum statements, statements that are vague and general enough to apply to a range of people just by probability. like. Cleaning your room improves your state of mind or if you picture yourself doing something, it will happen. 
Things that are no shit Sherlock by nature or by sheer probability will happen once in a while for a small population. It's what they will call manifestation and it's bullshit. I was thinking of an old friend the other day and I ran into them on the street. I didn't manifest them, they just lived nearby. And if I didn't run into them, it would not have been a great deal and I would have just forgotten it. But for certain people, these chance events may seem like a sign. Even if these statements only happen to one in 100 people, People, that's still enough of a catch. Because what cults are going for once a fish is caught is quality, not quantity. They can charge hundreds, if not thousands of dollars for each interaction. If the reach of your net hits just a thousand people, that's 10 people in your network. Easily over a thousand dollars will have just entered the cult's pocket. Trawling narratives will also ask people to prove things that are difficult, if not impossible to prove. Have you ever seen the round earth from space with your own eyes? How do you prove my god doesn't exist? You will likely never have the money to see earth from space, and disproving god is literally scientifically impossible. This method weeds out people who are able to think critically, and the only ones left are those who want to believe, or those who can't disprove the ideology themselves. These widespread propagandas uses a lot of false promises to lure in their victims. They target victims undergoing certain phases of their lives, or events that are universal, meaning that so long as the word of their movement continues to spread, they will always gather a pool of recruits, because people will always experience life. It gives them a false appearance of longevity, like they can last forever and make what they are saying seem true simply by the length of time of their existence. In truth, they are simply running through the same type of victims in each generation of the people. They will tout prominent members to give themselves legitimacy, like a famous actor or a member of parliament. But if you look closely, these people often come from similar backgrounds to a disproportionate percentage of the population. That's because they target our innate human need to find our own community, and thus end up with people who are already likely to swing that way. And considering how smart and attractive my audiences are, you will realize this manipulation of social needs to become a recurring theme. Now let's talk about angling. Angling, as its name suggests, is when the cult decides to recruit directly, through one-on-one -on -one means or in small groups. Like actual angling, they employ tactics that involve bait, either by attaching a worm on a hook or scattering them in the water to lure fishes. The scatter technique would be to host meetup groups, social or otherwise. Cell groups, religious gatherings, and self-help seminars are prime examples. For example, the main subject of my previous video, host seminars and community events. Hosting these gatherings allows them to directly gauge the possibility that a person would fall for their messaging. Unlike trawling, they are going for a small but intimate solution that often relies on manipulating direct trust. Once they identify potential victims, they either engage themselves or send their followers in to directly reel these victims in. They meet up, form bonds, and try to engage personally to draw their targets into the movement. Televangelists are known to procure participants' information beforehand so that they can do hot readings and seem more personal when the time comes. The most famous of these cases being Peter Popoff, who was exposed by the late James Randi in 1981. The bait and hook method, however, requires the recruiter to go out and seek their victims individually. They can do this by going to public meetups and social groups, targeting people by their needs, usually at vulnerable points in their lives. Ever met a really pushy person that just wants you to join their chakra meditation group for the betterment of your health? That's pretty much it. For example, I have independently confirmed that the subject on my previous video have targeted people undergoing career transitions, living with mental illnesses, and undergoing cancer treatment. They offer solutions for seemingly impossible things when they are just events that are not entirely in your control. It preys on people's desperation to be rid of suffering and life problems. If the problem resolves itself, the cult would have then gained a follower who believed they will help. If it doesn't resolve, the cult will continue to milk the victim for everything they are worth, continuously dangling the bait of hope in front of their eyes. Just follow the message in this book and everything will be fine. Come to one more seminar and all will be revealed. They will not tell you how their thousand dollar seminars is not normal in cost. Unlike this equivalent talk hosted by a friend of the channel and therapist Fion Liu that was made entirely free for returning clients. And while genuine therapists will tell you that the methods they teach are helpful but not all encompassing, 
Crowds will tout their movement as the solution to everything. If the leader takes part in the angling process, they will push you to meet and become personally acquainted, creating a bond that will lead you into a cult of personality, where the leader isn't just some faceless dictator, but your friend, your pal. We've had lunch before. However, this is a high-risk, high-reward situation, because the cult must put themselves in direct contact for angling to work. It can be difficult to distance themselves from any act of wrongdoings if they are exposed, like accidentally targeting an insane video essayist and public mental health advocate, and then this video essayist goes on to produce deep dive videos into your movement that debunks your entire person. That's right, this video is your own fault, jackass. Now, let's talk about how cults stay out of trouble. Because no matter how cleanly these groups perform their activities, they eventually will mess up. Words spread and negative perceptions of them will form as their actions cause further harm. So these movements will need tactics to evade or mitigate damage. For decentralized movements like incels, flat earthers and neo-Nazis, the fact that they don't have a single point of failure makes them naturally resistant to outside influence, like limbs of a hydra. They will just cut off the arm that made the mistake. Take the January 6th insurrection in the US. After that, everyone who was caught were basically shunned by the larger movements. They were all Antifa, BLM, Satanist plants. No real followers of the movement did anything wrong. This avowing is a common phrase people in these movements use to distance themselves from those who are caught. We didn't do anything wrong like those criminals. Unlike those that got arrested, we're law-abiding fascists. For small groups like the subject on my previous video, staying media positive is far simpler. While trying to grow your audience, keep changing your name just enough that investigative outlets can't pick you up. And when you're ready to use your real brand, silence anyone who has any criticism about you with lawsuits. These are called slap suits or intimidation lawsuits. As the name suggests, the suits are just there to scare people. It can have zero legal standing and it doesn't matter because the reason for filing the suit is just to cause distress. Like this Reddit user who contacted me after the subject on my previous video filed a suit to have them take down their comments. And despite how hilariously incompetent the suit was, even down to its name, and the fact that the multiple lawyers consulted by both me and the defendant stated that there is no legal standing for the claim, the subject's goal was achieved. The defendant took their comments down, just so they won't have to deal with the legal legwork. Because doing this through the books would incur expensive legal costs, and they would have to reveal their real names and information to a person looking to do them harm. You might have noticed my last few videos did not do so well in views. That's because my channel was recovering from a copyright strike, one that I was unwilling to challenge despite being in the right, because it meant having to give the subject my address. Cults and leaders of this size will often use legal loopholes like these to scare their critics into silence. However, if cults grow their movements bigger, they'll no longer be able to avoid these legal battles. At that moment, they will prefer to have their own internal judiciary to clean up criticism in-house. A great example of this would be Jehovah's Witnesses, who hit nearly 2,000 child sexual abuse allegations from the authorities for decades by enforcing their own internal judiciary standard. Because if they're in control of their own laws, Who's to stop them when they commit a crime? If they wanted to, they could make assault morally acceptable in their movement and their brainwashed followers would eat it up. If you think this is isolated to religion, think again. Nexium, a self-help cult, also sexually assaulted children. Because these cults make deities, prophets, and spiritual leaders out of mortals and con men. They turn liars into gods. And at this point, you might be wondering how people even fall for these things. You've seen others do this before and you've never fell for them, as expected because you are all very handsome, beautiful and smart. Well, that's because you don't yet fulfill the conditions to be recruited. Cults take advantage of people at moments of great change and when you are in those moments, you become susceptible. Anyone can fall victim. Growing up, changing jobs, mourning a loss, all of them perfect time for cults to wedge themselves into your life. These movements prey on humanity, our need to be loved, our want for stability, our yearning for knowledge. Their advice aren't special, they aren't even the only ones making them. If you follow similar advice from others not taking advantage of you, you will also reach the same results. You are always going to do something else after graduation. You are always going to move on from jobs as you grow. You are always going to stop grieving a loss. That's just how time works. But these charismatic personalities and beautifully worded manifestos squeeze themselves into these gaps of your life, so you can't help but think they were the cause of the great change, even though you were always going to heal on your own. 
What are the odds that right at the moment you needed it most, these random people came along and offered you a solution? And because humans naturally trust each other, it's our nature to give them the benefit of the doubt. And it is the fisherman's game that while reeling in their catch, they never let us know we were caught on purpose, that we were actually targeted, and not by the will of gods or karma. It's our ability to recognize patterns backfiring against us. Now, our own natural capabilities to move forward in time is suddenly due to the power of these people. You couldn't have gotten the courage to leave your old job on your own. You needed their help. You couldn't have figured out your future by yourself. You needed their help. Your body's natural ability to heal itself while medicines beginning to work are now miracles they perform. A human's instinct to survive grief are now secret meditative teachings. And if your condition gets worse, you just didn't believe enough. Pray more, attend more sessions, buy more books, at least that's what these people will tell you. But whether they are true believers in their own fiction or just scam artists trying to claw their way into your life, always remember, they are like vampires. They live by feeding off you while telling you that you need them to survive the harsh world outside, when in reality it's the opposite. But like vampires, they cannot enter the home of your soul unless you let them. So grab a stick and cut your heart because the thing that's in your chest that pumps you life, that is all yours and not a beat of death. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This is the outro but the video is not entirely over yet because I want to tell you a little story. Uh, I want to tell you a story about this guy. One of the people that was shown in this video, the person who was undergoing cancer treatment um he was my friend and last week he passed away he was tired of kicking cancer's ass so he decided to let cancer have a win <laughs> one of the reasons why this video exists is because he told me that one of these cult followers had approached him as well if he hadn't i wouldn't have known this was a recurring thing and i wouldn't have gone as deep as I have. You'll realize that unlike my last video, I didn't use any names this time because these people are incredibly litigious. So I'm intending to keep this as anonymous as I possibly can to protect as many people as I can, which includes my friend. And the reason I'm bringing up this Bulbasaur is because him and his brethren, like the Eevee over there, I don't know if you can see him, they cost about $50. And the seminar that he was invited to by this cult group cost $50 as well. I have heard horrifying tales from people who have lost thousands to 30,000 to $50,000 to this. I'm just gonna call them what they are. They are scammers. People have lost their life savings on this. And some of these people, they are undergoing the same kind of life-threatening illness that my friend went through. And the last year, while my friend was alive, while he was fighting his cancer, he spent, he must have spent thousands of dollars organizing parties and meals and dinners and gifts for all his friends. And this is now one of the most valuable things in my possession. It's, every time I look at this stupid face, I will remember him. I'm sorry. <sighs> Somewhere out there. Someone didn't get their Bulbasaur. Someone didn't get their own dirty little friend to remember their loved ones by. Somewhere out there, someone, instead of spending those money on their loved ones and creating forever memories, has been scammed by the false hope provided by these people. And they didn't get their Bulbasaurs. And if anyone asks me why this subject is so important to me, that's the reason. So from now on, every time I'm in front of this secondary set, you're going to see that Bulbasaur and Eevee. And you're going to remember him. And I'm going to remember him. And every time you see one of these scammers, remember that Bulbasaur. That stupid, dopey looking piece of shit. If you are in the process of meeting any of these people, fucking run. Because if you don't, your loved ones might not have a Bulbasaur.
words. It sounded a lot more dramatic in my head. Thanks for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. Patreon.com slash Aiden underscore Ng if you want to support me doing more of these. Stay safe, and I will see you next time. Bye.